Hello and welcome back to Analog Comics. Today I'm going to talk about this one. Step by bloody step. It's a wordless fantasy story, as it says in the cover, meaning that it's a silent comic. There's no dialogue, or well, kind of. There are certain places where we can see the main characters communicating, but there are no speech bubbles. But there are some speech bubbles, but they contain an alien language. What's inside them is just symbols, like in Predator, you can't make it out, you know, what they're actually saying. So technically, it's a silent comic. The reason why I stumbled on this is Isola. I did a video about this series uh, just a while ago, and, and uh, there's two parts in this Isola series, and this is half silent. It's mostly silent. And there are also speech bubbles with just symbols on them, but there is also regular talking, like discussions, but it is mainly quiet. And it made me think how well that quietness uh, fits the fantasy world. So I went looking for something similar. Now I can already say that this is a great find. I wouldn't be talking about this unless I liked it. And I liked ordering this because I already liked the cover. It's the kind of cover that gets my attention. There's just this a uh, young little girl and a massive something, like a m massive, uh, looks like a knight or a robot. And these two characters are the main characters in the story. The premise of the story is very simple. This massive uh, guardian opens a hand and there is a small girl on its hand. And at that point, the girl is even younger than in, in this picture. And that's all we know. And they are just walking. They just keep walking. And that was enough to intrigue me and I wanted to see where it leads. However, because the story is the pictures, I have to be very careful what I show you. I just tried to show some random pages or panels. I don't know yet. I have to kind of be very picky and choose what I show you. But before diving in, let's look at the book, the object itself. Step by Bloody Step is a regular trade paperback. So nothing special about that. It's published by Image Comics, just like Isola. It's from Image, so that was kind of easy to find. The first thing that got my attention when I got this book is that it's pretty thick. So there's a lot of content there. And that's to be expected if the whole story is in pictures. You can't explain a lot of history or things in one speech bubble. Uh, you have to tell the whole thing with just pictures. And uh, this story moves with the walking pace. So there has to be a lot of pictures. The story is written by Spurrier, art is by Vergara and colors by Lopez. Let's see, I, I'll see the whole names. I can't remember the full names. Yes, story by C. Spurrier, that's short for Simon Spurrier. Art is by Matias Vergara and colors by Mateus Lopez. And they have all earned their name on the cover. They are all very important parts in, in, in this comic and, and they're all carrying their own weight, so to speak. I'm very bad at names. I just can't remember the names. I read comics and I do read who's doing what, but I forget them very easily. So I, I had to Google a little bit if I have ever encountered any of their works. I did it after reading this. I thought that I have never been reading any from these creators, but it turned out that Mr. Spurrier, I have already been his fan. I didn't remember that he is responsible for most of the Marvel's Star Wars Dr. Afra series. I really like this one. It, it had a really good story and it's actually the story got me more hooked than the art. Some of the art he, here is not to my taste, but the story was really good. So now I'm liking Spurrier's work in, in very two different contexts. Bergara, artist here, I don't think I have ever read anything from him. I would remember these graphics. Of course, it's possible that he's capable of drawing in many different styles, but I don't remember seeing this type of style. But I did find that uh, Bergara and Spurrier, they have worked before. They have a series called Coda, and that's also a fantasy series. It's on my shopping list now. But before going into the panels, I'll show you a bit what's in the front and what's in the back, and then we go to the actual art. First here, we got Little Feet, the Step by Bloody Step logo. 
for worldless fantasy. Then we have a very nice full page panel here, which would work very well if it was framed on the wall, actually. Um, another bloody step here, creators. And here in the small text, it says that this collects the single issues from one to four. That made me think that because this is so thick and there aren't that much extras that the original single issues, they might have been much thicker than the regular single issues. Which made me think that why wasn't this published in an album format? I know, I know, I keep talking about these album things, but this would really would have worked. I mean, if you put the single issues in double size, so there's double amount of pages and these kind of awesome graphics, that's an album. But yeah, it's an image comics, so it's a US format, I get it. You know, may maybe if it gets a deluxe edition, I will buy it. Okay, let's see where, where was I here. And then there are a bit more steps here, kind of a small poem which uh, is put at the beginning of each chapter. And then the first page showing the massive hand of this giant guardian, as they call it in the back of the book, and the little girl resting on, on the hand. Okay, then I show you what's in the back. More bloody uh, footprints. Some reviews saying that it's a great book. Well, it is. And then the synopsis. I don't usually read the synopsis before reading the comic. I do read it afterwards just to see what was the mar marketing kind of angle on it. But here is a one that can be read and it, it won't spoil anything. It just says, there is a girl, she has no memory and no name, nothing but a guardian, an armored giant who protects her from predators and pitfalls. And that's all you know when you start. Okay, let's take it inside. More footprints, nice picture there. A bit more details on the uh, creators and uh, this is one of the characters in the story and they are so Moebius. It's, I think this is this has to be some kind of nod to Moebius. It's just these uh, two characters that look like this and they kind of stand out because the rest of the graphics are nothing like Moebius. There is more organic but uh, I, I found this as a big compliment to more abuse, just these two characters. Okay, then we go forward. A map, which isn't a surprise in a fantasy story. However, I didn't find this useful even after the story. I did try to look at it, but it didn't bring anything uh, additional to the story for me. But it's here, uh, you know, if you like these maps, it's here. Then, oh, this is a good one. This is a really good one. Uh, there's a script and the art. They call this section from script to art. So what you're seeing here, after reading it, they give you a few pages of the story. They give you the script that uh, Simon Spurrier wrote, and then you see how it came out in the art. You can see the finished page here with the colors and everything, and this is just uh, the black and white page. I don't usually read the scripts. They don't give me that much info. Sometimes do, but it's rare. But in this case, this was a really good bonus. There aren't that many pages. I have to show, um, I can show you this one. There aren't that many pages here, but for me, this gave uh, glimpses of kind of bo more to the story, a new layer for uh, certain scenes. I can't show you the next page, it reveals too much. Then there is the script to art, cover for that extras. Then we have covers, cover B, cover A. Um, so kind of vari variant covers. I have stated many times that I don't care about variant covers. And what I mean by that is that if I would buy single issues, I wouldn't hunt down the one with the certain cover. What's inside is more important to me or I wouldn't hunt down all of the different covers to, to collect them all. That's what I mean by it. Having said that, all of these covers, they're always really nice. This, I mean, 
the normal and the variant these are really nice art and that's why i like the trade paperbacks because they usually collect all of these so i just get you know the best out of it i get those really nice works of art but i don't have to hunt down five versions of the same comic that's just me and also kind of spaceship so this really jumps around the story and this one i can show you it's like a two page splash and yeah i can still show you these ones but and there's still one more i can't go anymore because, because the next one is the last page of the story Okay, so a few words about the story itself. As I said before, it starts with this massive giant a guardian carrying this small girl. She has no memory, no name that's not revealed, and they are just moving, just going forward, just going forward. And at some point, the girl starts to walk by herself, and they just keep walking. But however, there is a need for this guardian. For some reason, this girl is attacked by every monster and their neighbor. She is constantly in danger. Creators have come up with all kinds of weird monsters uh, in the forest and whatever kind of landscapes and vistas they are moving and they just keep coming. And then this big giant is pretty efficient guardian. I mean, it just keeps slashing and tearing through these uh, monsters and animals and that was already kind of visually interesting to see and, and, and kind of fun you know you know there, there's a massive guardian battling with all the monsters what's not to like Tori has an ending it has a conclusion like a, it, it is a sa very satisfactory ending but there is no explanation how long does this story take the girl gets older while the story uh, evolves and, and goes further but you don't know if she's getting older with the normal pace or with some other uh, tempo. And, and, and there's the one thing why I can't go deeper into this subject, but she is getting older and at the same time she's changing as a, uh, well, I guess we say human being as she looks human being just going through these different phases that a growing child would and that creates interesting dynamics between these two main characters as the different chapters start they start from a very completely different looking place than what the previous one left you that's one of the ways you can kind of see how the time progresses but they're not really telling that did it take a month three months a year three years a day there's no explanation and once you got to the end you kind of realize that that's for you to decide but as she is getting older she is also getting more feisty more um you know becoming herself becoming a person that wants to be uh, clearly someone uh, as an individual and that creates that certain dynamics even tension between between these two characters and i found it to be very interesting i don't know what word i should use it was it was sometimes uh gut-wrenching heartwarming uh annoying yeah i think the creators kept it interesting by having her change but in a way this character, the Guardian, doesn't change. It clearly has one purpose. But there is a certain type of evolution with this character also, and I can't really say more about that. Then I have to mention that I guess the main plot, the idea behind this, almost at the first page. I already started there thinking, you know, is this about that? And then I, I went further a few pages and I was more convinced that it's, you know, what I thought it would be. And it ended up being just that. But it had absolutely no impact on how I enjoyed the book. As the story is all visual, it's about how you tell it. And Bergara is a really talented artist. Uh, I mean, he's able to evoke those feelings. You see the feelings. Uh, with the gestures and, and uh, the body language in the eyes. And they're not just angry or happy. There are layers there. 
And I think many of the scenes were so that when different people are reading it, they bring themselves to it. You know, if something is sad or happy or somewhere there in between, it's you who decide what kind of, you know, ratio that is or how you come out of it feeling, you know, who's right, who's wrong, what's, what should have happened. And I see that as a massive talent from the artist. But as I mentioned, it doesn't matter even if you kind of guess the main idea of this, because it's not like that classic scene in, in um, uh, Simpsons where Homer comes out of the movie theater. He, he just went to see the Empire Strikes Back and he's yelling like, I didn't know that water was uh, father of Luke. And everybody else queuing to the next show goes like, oh, you know, it, it's not like that. This is more like Titanic. No one liked the Titanic movie because they were surprised that the boat sank. Everybody knew what was going to happen, but it was the story told so well. Is this some kind of a game changer? I, I don't know. I just enjoyed it a lot. And I am going to look more stuff from Bootsburier and Bergara and I think I'm going to look even more silent comics. If you have any good suggestions, just put them down there on the comments, because it seems that I uh, might ha be having a streak of silent comics. And I find the silent idea being very suitable for fantasy, because it allows the artist to go all out, you know, put all in there and just, you know, there's no, no limits. But that's all I'm going to say. If you are into silent comics, if you are into fantasy with great graphics, might be something for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.